Understanding the apparent strategy and narrative shift in the Israeli Hamas war. Hello, this is Chart GPT today. You know, there's always been this background noise uh, about a bit of an anti Semitic, anti Israel bent in mainstream media. Uh, you see this in business, or social media, academia. Uh, they've been somewhat anti uh, Israel and uh, pro Palestinian until just recently. And so there's been a bit of a narrative sh switch. Now everybody is super pro Israel. And of course, that's after the October 7th attack from Hamas on the situation there in the Gaza Strip there and you see this in the numbers here you see the, the support for Israel been fairly constant however the Palestinians have been coming up in terms of their support and you see this more dramatically in the party shift Democrats being some believe that they're the uh, the holders of the globalist view and they're trying to in the authoritarian we saw that in COVID uh, and other things and so the the narrative has been somewhat the globalists have wanted somewhat of a pro-Palestinian stance but again you can see this in this poll here and you can see the 18 to 29s do not have a negative view of neg uh, Hamas where the older you are the more negative you'll be so the, the it's been successful in the academia to um, train the youth to be somewhat anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian for whatever the reason and I don't want to get too much in on this is I'm just trying to state the strategy I'm not trying to give you my own personal view I'm giving you the personal view in terms of what the strategy is not necessarily trying to take take sides or say one one is right or one is wrong. Just trying to understand it. So with that understanding, you can see that Israel has been flooding with social media to try to shape the opinions around the world. Okay, uh, I'm not sure that's it. I think it's been a true uh, sympathy for Israel because obviously they did an unprovoked attack. But of course, the Palestinian side will say, "Yeah, but we've been in a basically in a uh, prison camp for decades." So there's that you know, to tug of war and, and, and opinions. But I think what he need to do is step back and see what the strategy is going forward. Now, what do the globalists want? The globalists want to promote chaos to get the public to fear and cry for security and accept their rule and usher in the utopian state. So their their goal is just to create chaos. There's that. And, of course, Hamas, I think it's quite clear what their objective is, to inflict enough terror on Israel to get them to overreact and give them their quote-unquote Hamas genocide, then the hope is that they will bring in other Muslim state in a wider conflict to act on their behalf. They're wanting countries like Egypt, Jordan, you know, uh, Turkey, and Iran, obviously, and other states to, to come into a wider war where they think they can get a better deal. And so what happens to them is probably immaterial. They're, they're using human shields. They'll even kill some of their own people to achieve a greater goal. And of course, Israel is to eliminate Hamas and maintain their wider state of Israel. What that means is if Hamas is trying to create and bait the Israelis into overreacting, you know, how much does it constitute Hamas genocide? We're about eight, seven, eight thousand uh, dead Palestinians now. And that sounds very crass and it's not meant to be, but it's just, you know, when you're talking trees, you have to kind of take the emotion out of it. So somewhere between 10,000 and probably 50,000, the world's opinion will probably change from from pro-Israel to saying, whoa, wait a minute. And there's already voices talking about ceasefires, et cetera, et cetera, because they're, they're worried about a, a genocide and, and a global war that may instill. So let's take a look at the timeline, what that might look like. Okay, so initially, the narrative, as we were discussing before, was somewhat pro-Palestinian. But on October 7th, the Hamas attack, the, immediately the narrative switched, and now it's basically pro-Israel. Pro and, and if you say anything negative, Toward Israel and positive toward Palestine, you'll be, you'll be considered anti-Semitic. So where that where where that will shift will be when the world sees tens of thousands of deaths on the Palestinian side, and of course that is uh, when the genocide will be that be labeled a quote unquote a Hamas genocide, and then the, the support will begin to wane over time, and memory will start to dissipate, and people will forget why we're even in this war in the first place. And so with that, as, as the narrative begins to shift back, so the narrative, you know, people say, well, you know, why did the shift? It shifts up, and then it'll shift back down. And then as soon as that, the sympathies goes back to the Pal Palestinian side, and of course, that's the hope of Hamas to get this uh, war started. Of course, today, you can see where it's marked there. We're not to that point yet, but we're approaching it very quickly. And this is what they're all fearing of, and this is why the call for a ceasefire, because we're worrying whether or not will Israel take the bait. In any case, take a look at the AI, what it says. It might be interesting to see what it says in terms of what constitutes a genocide. And take our online poll. 
Will the Israeli Hamas war go into a regional war? Check that out in the description link and the post link there. And don't forget to subscribe.